Imagine yourself as a good human being who stumbled upon something you really enjoyed. In fact, you enjoyed it so much that you start to show a little appreciation for it. Maybe you start off with something small, like some nice simple fan art. Like, hey, there's my buddy Sans, Sans Undertale! Or maybe you did something bigger and make an entire blog post or video giving a nice analysis on this thing you enjoyed. You talk about why you like this thing, but you know, you're well aware that there are some flaws to this thing. But then, what's this? You're getting spammed with loads of hate messages as a wave of toxic fans comes by. But it gets worse. Your curiosity fills your head with the rumors you've heard, and dear god. The harassment, the fan fictions, the fan art, they're everywhere! Who could have done this? Where is it coming from? But most importantly... Why does this happen so many damn times? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Now let me just start off by saying that it is totally okay to like or not like something. It doesn't matter what you like, just don't like it too much. Because, you know, it isn't okay, uh, harassing others, threatening others, and really just doing other questionable stuff. I'm sure everyone has talked about at least one fandom they know is absolute shit. You've got Finets of Freddy's, Undertale, Rick and Morty, and everything else that exists in the universe. Though it is important to remember that not every fan is bad. In fact, a majority of the fans are actually good people. And even though the toxic fans only make up like a small percentage, there's something about that small percentage that really just ruins the entire experience for everyone else. And remember, this isn't just young kids we believe to be the only toxic fans. We're talking about actual grown-ups that are much older than I am. So today, I wanted to discuss over these toxic fandoms and kind of theorize what causes them to become toxic in the first place. First, let's talk about the difference between a good fan and a toxic fan. Let's represent this yellow guy as an actual good person, while this green guy as, well, an asshole. The good fans support each other in this collaborative community where they work together and build each other up. They're also pretty open-minded as they don't mind non-fans watching or liking different things as they are well aware that what they like isn't everyone's cup of tea. And on some occasions, they may request something they think would be nice but also respects the rights of the creator to reject those suggestions and focus on their own creative direction. And while the good fans are like two people drinking tea and having a nice conversation at a cafe, the toxic fans are the opposite. They're like those people who chug three bottles of energy drinks and perform a rap battle just to see who is the loudest and most annoying person there. Toxic fans have a sense of entitlement, possessiveness, and superiority. They attack other fans as they feel like they are the only true fans and that the other fans or non-fans are just quote unquote normies. They brag that they're special just because of the thing they like. They often treat any form of criticism for any show, movie, or any forms of entertainment as some personal insult and will often react very emotionally. There's a lot of controlling, nagging, harassment, and bullying that often targets young people as they haven't developed a full understanding of the world around them. And in some cases, they will often create huge demands to the creators, some of which are impossible to meet, and will send threats to those creators if those demands aren't met. And the final characteristic is that they are so caught up in their fandom from their obsessiveness, validation, and attention, if they have any validation and attention, that they'll stop caring about other people in the outside world, whether it's someone they've never met before or someone important, like a friend or a family member. So that was a quick refresh on what a good and bad fan is. If there are bad or toxic fans, then what are the causes of these toxic fandoms? Well, unfortunately, that's not an easy question to answer. There's always points where you pick a factor out that makes one fandom bad, but the same thing isn't true for the other fandoms. Now I'm about to say that most of the possible answers will only come from my gut feeling because what I'm about to say will most likely be very, very wrong. Let's look at a few examples of fandoms almost everyone considers bad. We'll start off with Rick and Morty. I would say that this fandom became toxic from their over obsessiveness from Rick's character as he's both the brilliant scientist and an asshole. So the outcome you get is the attraction of people who think they're smarter than everyone else. So as you'd expect, they would act just like Rick. Another good example is K-pop, or Korean pop if you didn't figure that out. With idols and boy bands such as BTS, also known as the Bangtan Boys, the so-called K-pop stans, which the name originates from Eminem's song Stan, are over-obsessed with these idols and boy bands as boy bands usually involve songs often targeting young teens and adults and connecting themes such as love and other social and mental problems. Last but not least, we can't forget the one and only PewDiePie, and it's no surprise that he calls his fans, or used to call, his fan base the 9 year old army. My best guess is that PewDiePie's immature screaming and sense of humor, which I'm not hating on by the way, has caused his fan base to follow the same exact attitude. 
Of course, you got the usual forcing people to subscribe to him and saying the worst possible things to others who don't like his videos, even the nice ones that, again, aren't their cup of tea. But the peak of this toxic fandom happened during the whole PewDiePie vs T-Series thing last year. At first, many people did some fun and creative ways to ask people to subscribe to PewDiePie to keep his number one subscriber spot, and this worked well. A bit too well. And long story short, it got so out of control with all the hate towards T-Series and India and the criminal activities during this event that PewDiePie himself had to step up and say, yeah, can we like not do this again? Ever? Looking at these examples, I can see them having some character or characters they become over obsessive with. It could be from this immature tone they follow. There might also be some form of competition, and of course having a competition means there's going to be some shitting on others. Now what about the opposite side? What's going on at the good side of fandoms? If you were to search on YouTube for any lo-fi hip-hop song or compilation, you'll usually see that the comment section is actually nice and chill. People are sharing stories, giving positive comments, or just acting so polite. And that makes sense since there's no loud and annoying energy going on, you're just chilling the fuck out. Even if these comments are fake with their stories, it's still a million times better than those comments such as there's also been a few fandoms I noticed that have a divided community. I'd say Minecraft falls into this because as a sandbox game, there's two ways you can play the game. You can either use its simplicity as an advantage to build all sorts of cool things with blocks or be an adventurer and fight against others or just the world surrounding you. The builders are more passionate about creating all of these buildings and machines in the game. There's a positive community out there filled with great tutorials to help you build and improve your creations. The adventure in combat is fine when you're playing alone, yet the moment there's a competition involved with other players, well, you know there's going to be some shitting on other players. And while collaborating with others while building or adventuring can be fun and helpful, let's be honest, the moment you add multiplayer, there's always going to be that one asshole that ruins the entire experience. Within these good communities, there's something kind, calm, or supportive that invokes this positive experience. There's also this sense of passion and loyalty, rather than this over-obsessiveness over something. You're likely to have a good community about PC building, as there's people who build computers as a hobby and will gladly help others build theirs. That is, until they start calling other console players peasants. I've noticed a few times where a good fandom is based on this mature tone that's been followed in the show, movie, book, or game they've enjoyed. I don't mean mature in terms of violent and not safe for work content, but rather acting more mature. It's less of two siblings arguing and fighting over each other and more of your kind grandpa telling you a good, relaxing story. We've talked a lot about bad fandoms here and there, but is there anything we can do about these toxic fandoms? Mm, not really. I mean, on one hand, it's not like you roll a dice and hope you don't land on the bad one, but on the other hand, there's always going to be assholes that just ruins the experience for everyone else. I myself as a YouTuber can't make everyone happy with my videos and I get at least one dislike per video. And at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is to ignore these assholes and focus more on yourself. But the more important thing is to not become an asshole. Please don't do that. I don't really care if I get any hate or harassment, but harassing other people is definitely not okay. But you know what is okay? Remembering to like, comment, and subscribe! <laughs> Sorry, that was an awful transition. Anyways, I'm done talking about these fandoms here and there. Uh, I'm Joseph R. Carroll. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you soon.